My wife, she watched this whole other series of reality TV shows about Amish people. Have you guys seen any of these? Breaking Amish. The Amish Mafia. It was a real show. I want to tell her they're fake, but I can't find any Amish people who've seen them to back me up. So it's, it's my word against hers. And she's so invested in the lives of these people and like she's so interested, like she notices anything Amish now. If there's an Amish store while we're on the road, she wants to stop there. And a couple months ago, we were walking through the grocery store and we went through the book aisle and in the book aisle were these things called oh, Amish romance novels. That was my reaction, like why? Why would you do this? And they're not like what you, you guys remember the old romance novels, right? They had Fabio on the cover, all oiled up, hair blowing in the wind. <laughs> Amish romance novels are a little different. It's some modestly dressed Amish woman on the cover. She's got on her bonnet, but the straps are untied because that's provocative. <laughs> the straps are just blowing in the wind. <laughs> when I'm looking around the store, I don't see any Amish people anywhere, but these books are flying off the shelves, which means, which means everyday people are buying up Amish romance novels. They're watching Amish reality TV, which means there's a whole Amish industry I need to get into as a businessman. <laughs> So next year, I'm starting the first ever Amish soap opera. <laughs> it's gonna be called As the Butter Churns. <laughs> Start a whole web series called Amish Girls Gone Wild. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be Amish girls in hotel rooms doing crazy stuff, like turning the lights on and off. <laughs> Playing Xbox, it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> Having a wet shawl contest. I can't wait. <laughs> Time for spin the bonnet. It's gonna be awesome, so. A few weeks ago, I was driving through the middle of nowhere, Ohio, and I got pulled over uh, by an Amish cop. It was strange. I was driving, all of a sudden I heard, woo woo! <laughs> Looked in my rear view, wasn't even a siren, just a dude on a buggy yelling at me, like, woo woo! Pulled over, he hopped out of his buggy, came up to my window. He's like, license and registration, sir. And I looked at him, I was like, you don't have a computer to run this. <laughs> he goes, that's enough lip out of you, boy. I was like, boy, that is very aggressive. And then he said this, he goes, oh, is Officer Ezekiel gonna have to tase somebody tonight? <laughs> Look, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, okay? The black man in me got a little nervous. But the comedian in me was like, oh, I gotta see where this is going. <laughs> I started talking junk back to him. I was like, I was like oh, you gonna tase me, Mr. Amish? I was ain't nobody scared of you. Pull out your taser, punk. <laughs> this fool pulled out a carpet square and started rubbing his feet. <laughs> Glad I had power windows. He didn't know what to do. I was like, no, I'm out of here. <laughs> that is simultaneously the dumbest joke I've ever written and my favorite. So. Three great stories when I'm on the road. I was in Pennsylvania. I read about four guys who got arrested for stopping and robbing Amish buggy drivers. What are you gonna get from them? They're Amish people. Give me your butter churn. <laughs> I want that pitchfork or I'll shoot. You can't have this, this was a Christmas present. <laughs> that was a bonus joke for the six of you who got that one. <laughs> from Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, which means I go on terrible Midwest family vacations every year. I have no say in where we go. Two years ago, we went to Amish country. I don't know if you guys have been to Amish country, but that place is not fun at all. <laughs> okay, I, uh, I did not care for You know what I didn't like? I'll tell you what I didn't like. The people. I didn't like the people. I've, I'm sorry. If you're friends with them, I apologize. I just, I found them to be very hypocritical, you know? 
because they're all, we don't believe in electricity, <laughs> but we'll use it if we need to run your visa card. And I don't like that attitude, all right? I said, you go big or go home, Ezekiel. Don't plug up. It's a slippery slope. He didn't like me, probably because his name wasn't Ezekiel, but he looked like it should have been, you know. I couldn't have been that far off, is what I'm trying to say. I think we just got started on the wrong foot, okay? Because the only reason I agreed to go in the first place was if I was allowed to take pictures that I could put on Facebook. And the first time I take a picture, I get scolded by this Amish man. He says, sir, we would appreciate if you're going to take pictures that you did not take them of us. And I said, why is that? He said, pictures give us a sense of pride and we don't like to do things that make us feel proud. I said, you're charging three grand for a kitchen table without any chairs to go with it. I'm pretty sure you're proud of that table, all right? Not proud. Why don't you tell me for the fourth time how you put that barn up in one day? You're not proud. Okay, I'm just gonna go over here and I'll just let you know that I don't care how good your pretzels are, I'm not gonna be coming back here to Amish country. And I left them a scathing Yelp review. I never heard back from a manager, which is so typical. But, uh, I can't make fun. I used to live in Raytown, Missouri, myself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, really? <laughs> Stalking me? There's a double wide behind me. Who is that? I don't know if you heard about the guy from Raytown who won a gold medal at the Olympics. He had it bronzed and everything. True story. Most of you laughing. A few of you still looking at me like an Amish person at Best Buy. I'm not getting this. This is it, there's nobody after me, folks. This is it, right here. <laughs> so, lazy, so I'm like, okay, so I'm gonna have to have another job. What sort of job I'm gonna have? I don't wanna do that a whole lot, so what could I do? I'm brainstorming, uh, like a seedless watermelon planter or something like that. Uh, <laughs> right, it seemed pretty easy. And then, uh, okay, slower is what the deal is. All right, so, and then, Perhaps, it's gonna be a long special. Uh, perhaps, uh, maybe be a science teacher at an Amish school, something like that, right? You're like, that seems, I could probably do that. That seems like a pretty wor low workload. My pastor, he did give me good advice though. He, he said, hey, why don't you try online dating? I did it, I tried all, I tried all of them, right? I tried uh, uh, OkCupid, okay eHarmony, Groupon, all of them. <laughs> And I took all these tests about what I want in a woman, right? And took all these tests. And it turns out, like, it gave me, like, my five, five things I'm looking for, which is, uh, which is someone that's patient, kind, good with kids, dresses modestly, and is a hard worker. Woo! Yeah, turns out my perfect woman is Amish. <laughs> Do you know how hard it is to find an Amish woman online? <laughs> how, how am I supposed to call her up? Through telegraph or something? Be like, no, you hang up. <laughs> I can't do that. I still have a landline. I have a landline at my house so I can call my smartphone to find out where it is in the house. <laughs> Plus it's on vibrate, then I need a seismologist as well. <laughs> Thank you over there. Thank you. That's very difficult to get seismologists as a punchline. It really is. And I think I pulled it off. You know, even more difficult to get as a punchline, the word loom. Loom, here we go. <laughs> Boom. I, uh, I'm starting to get phone solicitations on my cell phone. There used to be just the province of landlines, but now I'm getting on my cell phone. I get a call on my cell phone the other day. The other day they go, hello, is this Mark Abel? I go, no, this is Milt Abel. And he goes, well, you've won. <laughs> yeah, think about that. I got it wrong. I'm still in first place. This is... He goes, you want a brand new Jeep Grand Cherokee? I said, well, great, send it over. He goes, yeah, you want a Jeep Cherokee, a color TV, or a portable radio? Oh, give me a minute on that. Uh, I'll stick with the Jeep. 
He goes, yeah, you want one of these three gifts, all you have to do is come down and listen to our 90-minute lecture on condominiums. Ever gotten a call like this before? Yeah, so now I know what's up. So I go, you know what? You can keep the Jeep. And now I can tell he's losing me. So he goes, hey, wait a minute now. Didn't you once fill out an entry form in a shopping mall or a movie theater over the past couple years? That's what he asked. Pretty much saying, have you been outside and signed your name? You're involved, you know? So, so now I just want to get rid of him. So I say, you know what? I never freak it plus like that. I'm Amish. I shouldn't be on the phone right now. <laughs> Of course, my fear is now get a letter saying you've won a buggy or a loom. <laughs> there it is. Thank you. You guys are the triple backflip with the dismount right there. All right, so. Wow. Well, I was doing some shows not too long ago um, in Pennsylvania Amish country. Any of y'all been up that way? That is beautiful country, isn't it? But let me tell you this, Amish comedy clubs, sound system stinks. <laughs> You're a whole lot smarter than most crowds, I guess. <laughs> so Provo, by way of Florida, I was just in Florida. I was in St. Augustine, Florida, which by the way, I don't know if you know this or not, St. Augustine, Florida is the oldest city um, in the United States. You can go there and see all the buildings that they built way back in the 1500s. And uh, then you can go to Tampa and you can actually meet the people that built them. <laughs> Then you can drive down to Naples and meet their parents. <laughs> so there's a lot of old people in Florida. <laughs> I was at a Walmart, the greeter said, can I get you a basket? <laughs> I don't know, can you? <laughs> Clear. <laughs> can I get you a casket? <laughs> No, uh, it's a super center. You know they sell them. <laughs> and, and listen, I'm not talking old like 80 or 90. My mother and father are that age. I'm talking people in their late 100s, early 200s. <laughs> I mean, they would come to my shows like this and stare at me like the Amish at Best Buy. <laughs> uh, I've never actually seen dead people sit up. <laughs> That's right, when all else fails, make fun of the Amish. Why? Because they have no electronic recording equipment to prove I said anything. If they did, they couldn't plug it in. So what the heck? Best they can muster up is a scribe. What did he say, Israel? I do not know, Abraham. I believe he's dissing our chariot. Because that's the thing. We don't understand what their motivation is different than, them, than us. That's when you know you're going slow, by the way. The Amish guy behind you is going, come on!